Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is parallel circuit analysis, and we want to know how are the various circuit parameters, current, resistance, and voltage, mathematically related for parallel circuits, and how do you analyze such circuits? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed relationships associated with parallel circuits. I left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. It's somewhat of a precursor to this video in which we discuss how do you mathematically analyze a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, charge passes through only a single resistor or branch, and when it does, it encounters a voltage drop. The voltage drop will be the same whether it patches, passes through the first branch, second branch, or third branch. And that voltage drop is equal to the voltage gained in the battery. That's what this equation is stating. Charge that exits the battery of a parallel circuit will eventually reach a node. And at the node, current is divided into different pathways. The sum of the current in the individual pathways will be equal to the current outside of those branches or pathways. Thus, we can say that the current within the battery and the wires outside the branches is equal to the sum of the currents inside the branches, I1 plus I2 plus I3. If you need to find the current within any of the branches, you need to know the electric potential difference across that branch and the resistance of the resistor in that branch. The electric potential difference across the branch is simply equal to the voltage of the battery. So you take the voltage of the battery and divide by the resistor in order to get the current. I1 is equal to the delta V of battery divided by R1. I2 equal delta V of battery divided by R2, etc. Determining the equivalent resistance of a parallel circuit can be quite tricky. You need to use this equation, which says the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance, REQ, is equal to the sum of the, of the reciprocals of the individual resistance values. What you would need to do is substitute R values into the right side of the equation and evaluate the right side of the equation. Once you found out what that is, that's equal to 1 over the equivalent resistance. Then simply reciprocate that number, that is, divide it into 1, and now you have the value for the equivalent resistance. In my first example problem, I have two resistors, a 4 ohm and a 6 ohm resistor, connected to a 24 volt battery in parallel. I want to determine all of this. I'm going to begin with the equivalent resistance. So 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6. I evaluate the right side. It comes out to be 0.4166 repeating. Then I say the equivalent resistance is 1 divided by 0.4166. comes out to be 2.4 ohms. I can place that in the blank. Now I want to calculate the current in the battery. It's simply the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance. So that would be 24 divided by 2.4. That comes out to be 10 amps. To determine I1 and I2, I need to know the voltage across the, across the branches and divide by the resistance in those branches. But I don't know the voltage across the branches yet, but it's easy enough to figure out if it's a 24 volt battery, then the charge will lose 24 volts in both of the branches. That's the delta V1 and delta V2. Now I'm ready to calculate I1. It's equal to delta V1 divided by R1. It's equal to 24 volts divided by 4 ohms. That comes out to be 6 amps. I can do the same for the second resistor. I2 is equal to delta V2 divided by R2. That's 24 volts divided by 6 ohms. Comes out to be 4 amps. Now as a final check, I can ask, is the battery current the same as the sum of the currents within the individual resistors? And so I, I sum 6 amps and 4 amps, and it's equal to 10 amps. Yes, that's the current in the battery. That away. Here is a three resistor parallel circuit with a 60 volt battery and resistance values of 17 ohms, 12 ohms, and 11 ohms. And I want to determine all of this. I'm going to begin with the equivalent resistance. So I go 1 over REQ equal 1 over 17 plus 1 over 12 plus 1 over 11. I evaluate the right side of the equation. It comes to 0 0.23306 and some change. Take the reciprocal of that, and that gives me the equivalent resistance. I can put it in the blank, about 4.29 ohms. Now I'm going to calculate the current the battery. I do that by going the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance or equivalent resistance. That's 60 divided by 4.29 and some change. That comes out to be 14 amps. I put it in the blank. Now for the easy ones right above me. Delta V1, delta V2, delta V3. Ends up charge gains 60 volts as it passes through the battery. It must lose 60 volts when it goes through the external circuit. It only goes through one of the branches. And so every charge will lose 60 volts in whatever branch it goes through. Delta V 
V1, delta V2, and delta V3 are all 60 volts. Now I'm ready to calculate I1, I2, I3. To calculate I1, I take the voltage drop across resistor 1, and I divide it by the resistance of resistor 1. That's 60 volts divided by 17, and it comes out to be 3.5 amps. I do the same for resistor 2. It's 60 amps divided by the 12 ohms, comes out to be 5 amps. And finally, for resistor 3, the current is 60 volts divided by 11 amps, or 11 ohms, that's 5.5 amps. Now I'm going to do a check. Is the sum of the branch currents equal to the current within the battery? They should be. So 3.5 plus 5.0 plus 5.5 sum to 14 amps. And that's the current in the battery. That away. Here's the third and final example problem, another three resistor parallel circuit, but we're going to do this one a little differently. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and take some time to solve the problem, to determine all the blanks, and then when you're ready, press play, you'll see the answers and the solutions to this question. And then stick around afterwards, so because i got a great action plan for you with lots of good activities to make the learning stick. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are five resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of, our, of this video. The Minds on Physics Mission and Concept Builder are a great mathematical practice, with the mission, Minds on Physics Mission being very much the same format of the problems of this video. The calculator pad allows you to solve physics word problems. You'll get a problem, an answer, and an audio guided solution. The simulation allows you to change a video and view the effect upon other variables. And finally, we have a tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.